Hello, Calc Kids! Welcome back to another lesson in calculus. This is Mr. Bean, and today we're going to talk about some comparison tests for convergence. There's two different types of comparison tests we're going to look at today. And this, we're going to use these when we're faced with trying to figure out the convergence or divergence of a series that just looks really complicated. So what we do is we compare it to something that is easier, something we already have learned about figuring out convergence, like a geometric or a P-series, something like that. So here's the first thing that you have to learn. If you have two different series and we say that A of N is smaller than B of N for all of N, then what happens is... If B of N converges, then A of N also converges. Now, this is kind of hard to just memorize, so let me show you just a little picture, and I think this will make a lot more sense. Draw really quickly for this one. Draw if you have some type of function that's going like this, and you can see here it's going to start flattening out, kind of like a... Uh, I should have drawn it like that. It's flattening out like an exponential decay graph. This is going to converge, so we'll call this one B of N. This is the larger one. So then underneath it, if I have... A of n, and it's going like this, and then it's starting to get squeezed underneath this. This one is our A of n. Well, if A of n is smaller than B of n, it's underneath the B of n, and we know B of n is converging, then A sub n also has to converge. That's what this means. If the larger one is converging, the one underneath it must also converge. So the, usually the picture helps you understand this a little bit more. So let's do that with the next one. If A of n is diverging, so let's say I have my A of n and it's going off forever to infinity, something like that. So this is my A sub n. Then the one that's above it, which is B of n, if it's going like this, if I know it's above it, it's not going to cross it. So when it gets there, it has to start going up. Then that means that B of n, so I'll call that one B, I should say B sub n, B sub n is also diverging. So if the lower one is diverging, then the one above it obviously has to stay above it, so it is also diverging. That's what this means. That's called the comparison test. And again, I would think of it like graphs. The one that's above it, if it's converging, then the one underneath it must converge. If the one below it is diverging, the one above it must also diverge. That's what these two statements mean. All right, let's put it into practice. Let's, let's try this out here. So what we have to do is find an example of something that we can compare it to. So I'm going to take this thing and I want to compare it to, I'm going to compare 1 over 2 to the n. See, these two things look very similar. Now, which one of these is larger? I'm going to remind you something right down here in the corner. If I have the fraction 1 tenth and the fraction 1 half, which one is larger? One half is larger, right? Half is lar much larger than a tenth. So the number on bottom, if the number is larger on bottom in the denominator, then the whole fraction is smaller, right? If this is bigger than the whole fraction is smaller. So look at this. This fraction is has a larger denominator, which means the entire fraction is smaller. So I can say this. I can say that zero is less than one over three plus two to the n, which is less than 1 over 2 to the n. So it goes in this order. Now, what do I know about 1 over 2 to the n? This thing is geometric. So it's geometric, and I know that it converges from our practice with geometric series. So that means if this one is the larger one and it's converging, then this thing must also converge. So that thing, I can say, converges. Why? Because comparison test. Now, if this thing that I was comparing, if this diverged, if this thing was diverging, then I could not make any conclusion about this. So you have to be careful about that. There would be no conclusion if this thing diverged. I would have to come up with something else to compare it to. All right, so let's do this one. So here, the most obvious, based on the first example that we did, the most obvious thing would be to compare it uh, to 1 over 4 to the n. But there is a subtraction here. So when you start listing in order which one is larger and which one is not, uh, you'd have this, 1 over 4 to the n, is actually smaller than this whole fraction, 1 over 4 to the n minus 3, right? Because if you're subtracting 3, that means this denominator is smaller, which means the whole fraction is larger than 1 over 4 to the n. So now, even though we know this thing is, uh, this is a geometric and it converges, so we know that thing's geometric, it converges. So even though we know this thing converges, we can't make any conclusion about this. We don't know what's happening. The lower one converges doesn't mean the one on top has to converge. It might still diverge. So what we do is we have to come up with something else to compare it to. So let's, let's compare 1 over 3 to the n. 
because now I can say 1 over 3 to the n is actually going to be larger than the 4 to the n, right? Because if it's a smaller denominator, then the whole fraction is actually larger. So this now is 4 to the n minus 3, less than 1 over 3 to the n. And now I know that this converges, so this thing converges. And if the one that's larger converges, then that one must also converge. Now let's do one more example of these. And that is when you have, uh, let's see, you've got one that's not exponential. So you have this thing here. Let's think about what can we compare. It looks kind of similar to this. I could compare it to 1 over 7n squared. I could put the 7 here, but I don't have to. I could just say n squared. I'm just trying to, the 7 won't really make much difference when you're talking about going off to infinity. And this here is a p series. So this is a p series and the p is larger than 1 to 2. So therefore, this converges. So I know that this thing converges, so now let's compare them. So let's put them in order to make sure that we know which one's which. We got more stuff going on here in the denominator. The denominator is larger, which means the whole fraction is smaller. And then this wouldn't be less than or equal to the one we're comparing it to. So since this works, and we know that converges, then this one also converges. All right, so we've covered the comparison test. Now next up, we're going to take a look at what's called the limit comparison test. Now I will admit most of the problems I work through, I tend to use the limit comparison test. I just think it's a little easier only because you don't have to figure out if A or B is larger, which one's larger. All they have to do is both be positive and then you can work with it. See on this other one that we worked through, we had to know that the A was smaller than the B. One of the series, we have to know which one's larger and which one's smaller to make the comparison test work. So you will have problems that you have to work with that, but I find it a little easier to usually use the limit comparison test. So here's what happens. You don't have to know which one's uh, larger. You just make put them in a little fraction. So you set this up and then you take the limit as n approaches infinity. So you put one over the other. And then as long as your limit exists, so your limit is finite, it exists and it's positive, then what happens is both of these two series either both converge or they both diverge. So if you know the one you're going to compare it to, and then you take the limit, if the one you're comparing it to converges, then they both converge. If the one you're comparing it to diverges, then they both diverge. Okay, so it's a bit different than the uh, than the other one where you had to know which one was smaller and, and which one's larger, and then that depended the convergence or divergence depending on which one was on bottom or top. Okay, so this is going to be a bit different. So let's take an example with this one. So how do you know what to compare it to? So when you have something crazy like this, here, I'm gonna put this in quotation marks, this idea of reducing. It's not really technically reducing, but you have to think of this uh, like horizontal asymptotes. If you were to go off forever and ever and ever, what would you really focus in on? You're focused really just on the terms that are the largest terms, this term and this term. So I'm gonna take this thing and just kind of reduce it down. So I'm gonna compare it, compare it to, so this becomes, I could say two over five n cubed like that, but really I don't even need the two fifths. I could just say one over n cubed. I don't even need the numbers there. So this is what I mean by quotation marks reduce, air quotes I'm doing, but you can't see me. And that is that uh, you just reduce the largest terms to kind of figure out what you can compare it to. So now we have this thing, this one over n to the third. You could also do two fifths, two over five n to the third, but again, it's not necessary. You can just do this one. So now does this converge or diverge? This is a P series and it converges. Okay, so we know that this thing converges. So now let's set up our limit. So we're going to say the limit as n approaches infinity. And what we do, if you look back here, we're going to set up one of them over the other. So I just start with the one that was the one that they gave us. So the limit of 2n squared minus 2 all over this thing, 5n to the fifth plus 3n plus 1. And now we're going to divide it by the one we're comparing it to, which was this one right here. So we're instead of dividing though, let's just multiply by the reciprocal because that's much easier than dividing fractions. Multiply by the reciprocal. So that now gives us the limit as n approaches infinity of the n cubed distributes. That gives us this new fraction. And then that whole thing equals, remember your horizontal asymptotes, you're only worried about the end of the fifth. None of this stuff matters, right? You're going off to infinity, so blah, 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 blah. We don't even care about it. So it's just two fifths. Now, it's not necessarily that we care that the answer is two fifths. It's just that we care that the limit existed, that the limit is finite and it's positive. And so since it works, since it is finite and it's positive, then what we know is that this 
convergence is the same as this convergence. So since this one converged, they both must converge. So our answer is that our original series converges. Sometimes in my answer key, I might have put both converges, but it's the same thing. You know, we're just saying if they both converge, then this one is obviously converging as well. Okay, so that is how the limit comparison test is. Don't be confused with the comparison test, which we did the first one. So let's look at this one now. So we're going to use some type of reduced comparison. So let's compare, what's something that would be reduced from this? Well, we just are gonna look at this largest term and I can get rid of the five there. Let's just do one over n squared. That's all we need to use to compare. Now, is this, before we start working it, we need to know if this converges or diverges. This is a P series. I don't know how to, I actually started spelling P, sorry. P series, and the P is greater than one, so that therefore this thing converges. See, what's nice about these tests is you get really good at the stuff we've already been practicing in unit 10. The geometric series, the P series, the nth term test, you gotta know all that stuff to be able to do these correctly. So you get pretty good at it through this lesson. So now let's set up our limit. So let's just rewrite this whole thing. And then we're gonna multiply it by the reciprocal of the one we're comparing it to. So there we go. And now you can see here, what is this limit going to equal? Well, we're gonna have the n squared on top, a five n squared on bottom. None of this stuff matters because we're going to infinity, so it's just one fifth. So one fifth is positive, the limit exists. So therefore they both do the same thing, which was converges. So these, the answer to this is that this series converges because we did the limit comparison test. All right, another one. So for this one, what do we wanna compare? So you look at the largest term, which in this case is this square root of 3n. The co whenever we have the coefficients, they really don't matter for when we're comparing, so I can just get rid of that. So I'm going to compare it to, this would be like my quote unquote reduced, the square root of n. Now does this thing, I'm going to compare it to this, but does this thing diverge or converge? This is also a p-series, but in this case, the p, this is n raised to the one half, so it's in between, it's less than one, so it's in between zero and one, so therefore this is diverging. So it diverges. So when we do our limit, now if we get our limit, then we know that this thing also diverges. But let's find out first. So our limit, n is gonna approach infinity of this thing, multiplied by the reciprocal of the one that we're comparing it to. And then so you're going to get, as you go to infinity, you have to think, what is this that we have? The leading coefficients, since the degrees are the same, this is just gonna be one over square root of three. All right, so since that's finite and positive, then the answer is that they both diverge. So this series diverges. All right, this one, let's compare. Let's see, we have this term and this term. Those are our leading terms. So if we try to reduce those, then we can compare it to one over, and the numbers, the coefficients, we don't care about the, those, so we just think about one over n squared. This is a p-series that, uh, not diverges, it converges, because the p-series, you have p that is larger than one, the exponent there. So let's check with the limit now. So we take the limit as n approaches infinity of this whole thing, and then we multiply it by the reciprocal of the one we're comparing it to, so n squared over one. And then you can see here that uh, this simplifies down. Now I'm gonna say that it's n to the fifth minus blah, 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 because the other stuff doesn't matter, all over. And then on bottom, I have two n to the fifth plus blah, blah, blah. None of that stuff matters because I'm just going to infinity. So then this equals one half. Okay, so we have one half, which means since it's, it is the limit that's positive, therefore they both are doing the same thing, so it converges. See, I like the limit comparison test because it's kind of nice. You don't have to figure out which one's larger or not. Okay, so just two more examples. I'm doing so many because there's just so many different types that you might be faced with and I wanted to give you a good feel for what you're gonna be faced with. All right, so this one, now we have something crazy going on. So we have this term here. This is one term and we're comparing it with this term. So when we quote unquote try to reduce this, what are we comparing? So the, one of those ends would cancel and we're left with three raised to the n over, and now again, I don't have to do a coefficient. I can just leave the four off and just say n squared because that one of those n's canceled. So this is what I'm comparing it to. Now, what does this do? Does this converge? Does it diverge? Because we have to figure that out before we start working through. Because if we do the limit and we find out that you know, we find the limit, but that doesn't tell us anything unless we know what this does. So uh, this one's a little bit trickier, but if you remember the nth term test, do you remember that? The nth term test? If you take the limit of this as n approaches infinity, so I'm gonna do the limit of the whole thing, and that does not equal zero. When the limit does not equal zero, we, it guarantees to diverge. 
If it equaled zero, that doesn't mean it converges. That's the nth term test. The nth term test, we're just going to go off to infinity. If it doesn't equal zero, which in this case it wouldn't, this thing's growing faster than the one on bottom. So then therefore we know for sure it diverges. So now we can use the, the limit comparison and set up uh, the original one, this whole thing, and multiply it by the reciprocal of the one we're comparing. So in this case, it'd be n squared over three to the n. So now I have the limit and approaches infinity. And then I can see here that that three to the n and that three to the n are gonna cancel. And I end up with an n cubed on top, four n cubed plus two on bottom and that will equal one fourth. So I have a finite answer, it is positive. Therefore, these are both gonna do the same thing. They both are going to diverge. So this series diverges. Whew. All right, last one. Let's compare this one to, okay, so I'm gonna look at this n and this. So here's what I'm thinking. I'm gonna take n to the first power and subtract the exponent of this. So that is three, it's the square root. So it's three halves. So one minus three halves equals and to the one half, negative one half. Yeah, negative one half. All right, so I'm gonna compare it to one over n to the one half. That's what I'm comparing it to. Okay, so it's like I simplified the terms that are the largest terms. Okay, so now this is a p-series, because we have to know if this uh, diverges or converges. This is a p-series where the p is less than one. It's in between zero and one. So this is going to diverge. So now let's figure out if this one also diverges. They both diverge if the limit is finite and positive. So we'll take the limit and is going to approach infinity of this original. We then multiply it by the reciprocal here. Then this cleans up uh, to b and approaches infinity of. So this is now n to the three halves on top here. And on bottom we have still the square root of n cubed plus n. Well now this part of it doesn't really matter, right? That doesn't really matter, we just have this. These are the same thing. n to the three halves is the same thing as the square root of n cubed. So with this equals one as you go off to infinity. Therefore, they are both doing the same thing, which was a diverging. So we say that this one also diverges. Okay, uh, I know a, little, a lot of stuff that we just covered just now. So you have the original which was just the comparison test, which is where you're, you have to know if one of them's larger than the other, and then that tells you the information. So here's the examples we just covered on that. So make sure the difference between the comparison test versus when we do the limit comparison test. I like the limit comparison test, but sometimes the questions are asked in a way where you have to know this information. You'll see some of those, especially in the test prep section of this packet. So this is Mr. Bean signing off, rock that mastery check, and I'll see you back in our next lesson.